hello and welcome to the channel how are you doing hope you are doing good so there is something i would have discussed about um last on my last video but i thought to discuss about it in this video you know for a fact if you have been on social media or what i see if you have been following any man of god especially for the new i won't say new look at me even using the word new for the younger ones, or what I say, the ones that are making the waves right now. I think the person of uh, Apostle Arome Osai is part of that mix. And uh, by now, if you have watched my video on the Miracle Money shenanigan, at least if you still believe in the Miracle Money doctrine, like we have discussed in different videos, and you believe it because of, quote-unquote, those that are seen as the pioneers, by now, I think you have to start asking yourself some serious questions. Because if you have seen the stage exposition and even the so-called credit score miracle <laughs> stage as well. But looking at the person of Apostle Arema Osai, which had stirred up that conversation and made a seemingly appearing rift in the body of men, at least I would say, not really, really about the body of Christ, even though the body of Christ is seen as an umbrella for which the men themselves would have to go back and forth and use their pupils to you know, give themselves woto woto. When I listened to the video of uh, Obert Angel, as at when he was lashing out at uh, Apostle Aremo Osai um, about the concept of miracle money, and uh, the same Sunday he had to fake the credit score miracle. So I mean, at least I'm giving his uh, his media team an idea so you people can remember. You know, he made a comment that seemingly appears as what. Uh, Apostle Justin Suleiman had also said in one video I came across, still in this whole miracle money thing. Listen to this particular aspect of that conversation. Dark Howard Mills spoke of miracle money. Pastor Chris Moya Hillam spoke of miracle money. In fact, that's the end. I don't want to talk about it. And you think you came out because of COVID? Generals that know God are wrong? And the scripture you are quoting is contradicting with you. Contradicting what you are saying. And you are blind that you can't see. You are contradicting yourself. I, but you see one thing. He knows he's contradicting himself. But, but he also knows his followers don't know it. How can you be so insecure that you want to be better than every man of God? Let me tell you something that I realized. Me submitting to pastors like this is a sure sign. I know I'm not better than other people. They want to be the prefect of the church. This, this man of God is wrong. Even Archbishop Nicholas and Lady Williams, you see, he's wrong. You, you, you who came about as a result of a disease, we got to know you because of a disease. And Archbishop is wrong. I'm not saying he's right every day. But why, 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 why open your mouth again as an elder? The church is now full of busy bodies. It wasn't so 10 years ago. Take your eyes from anybody's salvation. How anybody, I'm telling you the truth. You really see young men raised up these days. And when I say young men, I don't mean social media young men of God. There are COVID men of God. COVID. They became popular through COVID. Everybody was at home. That's how they became popular. We call them COVID preachers. <laughs> and the impression he gives is that Apostle Aramu Osai is a COVID preacher. I was listening to one, of, one preacher in Ghana, one of the old preachers in Ghana. And um, he was criticizing groaning. When you hear a man that is not spiritual speaking, if you have touched sacred things, you will know he's speaking from intelligence. Such a man that speaks from intelligence can speak right, but he doesn't have the authority to shift spirits. You no, know, and from that particular idea, you see also Apostle Justin Suleiman in a video I came across as well, still around this whole miracle money context, referring to some preachers as COVID preachers. I'm now wondering for those of you who got to know, because it's just more of like an open discussion right now. When did you get to know the person of Apostle Aramo Osai? Did he really become popular or famous based on the fact that COVID happened and people were more of at home and that is how he became popular? Because it's just so interesting to see if my idea is right at least for the person of Hubert angel seems more of like his conversation that entire sunday was 
majorly about the person of uh, Apostle Aaron Mosai, even though he did not mention a name, but of course still had to come and apologize for what he said about the said apostle. I'm now wondering to myself, how do these preachers get to see each other? Because I think to a great extent, their popularity also gets to matter a lot. Because if you are going to be seeing someone else as a COVID preacher, or someone that became famous because of COVID, if not for COVID, maybe people would have not known him. I'm now wondering to myself, how do these people even get to understand each other and on what criteria do they get to assess each other? I don't know if you understand. I'm also looking on the side of Apostle Laramo side because you have to listen with a, a different kind of ear when you really, really try to follow up these people and what they're saying. Because Laramo side would always say he speaks in parable. Most times when they speak, there are some misrepresentations when it comes to appropriating their words to who they might be addressing. But if you listen again further, you'll get to know that at this point, this person is speaking from a particular mindset. Like we said with the whole issue of miracle money, Eremo Osai said himself that he cannot stand hearing of a false doctrine being built upon or something. So he has to address the issue. That means he hears somebody, gets to say something, and then he gets to address it, even though he's addressing the issue, but not really addressing the person, which makes it more of like a general conversation. Just like right now, when both of them talk, with the person of Apostle Suleiman, you may not really say directly that he's talking about Aram Osai, but he's talking about a group of preachers that are COVID preachers. They became popular because of COVID. Ubat Angel, can directly say that he's talking about Aram Osai because the whole context of that particular conversation that Sunday was about trying to, re, uh, trying to give a rebuttal about the concept of miracle money, which he had to do another miracle that was staged. But that aside, so looking at this case right now, it's even more interesting that Aram Osai message that he preached at Dominion City. In fact, for you to also know, Dominion City where he got to preach in, um, the general overseer of Dominion City himself does not believe in miracle money and it is false prophets to him that are the ones that do miracle money. But there is a secret for discovering principles. And then that you discover them, you, you have in your hand what is called God's secret or the wisdom of God. You verify through patterns. So they give you Bible stories. If this pattern occurs, because pattern is a recurring event that keeps happening again and again. You notice, for example, in the Old Testament, every time sin or atonement needs to be made, what is the thing? Blood. They will sacrifice animals. You see it here, everywhere. Every time they want the glory of God to appear, like in the Mount, Sa Mount Camel, when Elijah wanted God to appear, they will sacrifice blood. You might not yet understand what is going on here. Why is it that every time, blood? If it is sin, blood. And then finally, the Son of God came. It is blood he has to shed to remove sin. You see that it keeps repeating everywhere. There is a law there as sure as the law of gravity. That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That means you now have something that will work in the day, in the night, in America, in Africa, in jungles, anywhere. But if you pick out something and say it's a law, it might be a hypothesis. You are just theories in your head. Because you go check biblical records, stories, you don't see it recorded. And if it happens only once, it's not a principle. Or three witnesses. This is why some people are coming out with practices that you can't find in the Bible. Say, they are giving people swords. The all kinds of nonsense you see with all these false prophets. Uh, coming up with miracle money. Where did you see it, Jesus? Where did you see his disciples? He said, the works I do, you are to do. You are deceiving the public. If you want to be authentic, if you don't want to finish and be thrown into hell, make sure that it's not just that you say you found revelation, that there are patterns. You will see people that are doing it in the Bible. Hello. Did Jesus do it? Then let's look at the disciples. 
that he raised. Did they do it? They did. He did. Then I can do it. And you are sure as anything. Well, in the end, I will still say this and I will say it a hundred times. None of these videos, I think in my opinion, would get to change anything in the realm of which these people operate because they will still have followers. No matter how gullible, look at the poor Pastor Mackenzie we looked at. Even right when he's still in this situation and then being caught by the government and then he's in, the, he's in custody and all that, his followers are still there. Those who are following him are they stupid. You understand? So, no matter how someone is good or someone is bad or someone is this or this, the person still has followers. Some of you hate me to the bones, but you are still following me. Why are you still following me? I don't know. Some of you love me, which I really appreciate. And you are still here watching my conversation because in the end, I bring these things together so that we can be aware of what is going on. My perspective may not be right. My opinion may not be right which is what you be, you should believe in. But at least you can face the fact of what I'm discussing. Make of it your own opinion because I present to you what I see and tell you what I think about what I see. So you may not always have to agree with me, which is fine. But you now look at this in consortium. Ask yourself a question. If the things that happen in the Bible didn't happen or were not recorded there for a reason, would you have known that Peter had a confrontation with Paul, or Paul had a confrontation with Peter, and how Paul himself would sometimes rebuke Timothy, and all the things that you see in the Bible. When I get to discuss these things that happen in the body of Christ, and there are blogs today that exist that talk about these things that happen, at least let's say amongst the men themselves. Just the same thing like you have in the Bible. It's facts over sentiment. Elijah, Elijah, stand on fire.